Facelier automata can can uh, do cognition. If a plant can do cognition, mm -hmm. if uh, a xenobot mm -hmm. can do cognition, how do I like whisper in its ear and 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 get an answer back to? How do I have a conversation? Yeah. Um, well, how do I have a xenobot on a podcast? That's a really, uh, really interesting line of um, investigation that 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 opens up. I mean, I mean, we've we've thought about this. So you need a few things. You need you need to understand the space in which they live. So uh, what? No, not not just the physical modality. Like, can they see light? Can they feel vibration? I mean, that's important, of course, because that's how you deliver your message. But but not just not just the, the ideas for a communication medium. Not not just the physical medium. But what is saliency, right? So, so what are these? Th what what are important to this? What what's important to this system? And systems have all kinds of different levels of sophistication of what you could expect to get back. And I, th I think what's what's really important. I call this um the the spectrum of persuadability, which is this this idea that when you're looking at a system, you can't you can't assume where on the spectrum it is. You have to do experiments. And so so for so so uh, for example. Uh, if you look at uh, a gene regulatory network, which is just a bunch of bunch of um, nodes that turn each other on and off at various rates, you might look at that and you say, "Wow, there's no magic here." I mean, clearly this thing is uh, is is as uh, deterministic as it gets. It's a piece of hardware. The only way we're going to be able to um, control it is by rewiring it, which is the way molecular biology works, right? We can add nodes, remove nodes, or whatever. Well, so we've done simulations and shown that um, biological, and now we're doing this in in the lab. The biological networks like that have have associative memory, so they can actually learn. They they can learn from experience. They have, they have habituation, they have sensitization, they have associative memory, which you wouldn't have known if you assume that they have to be on the left side of that spectrum. So when you're going to communicate with something, and we've even, um, uh, uh, Charles Abramson and I have written a paper on um, uh, behaviorist approaches to synthetic organisms, meaning that if you're given something, you have no idea what it is or what it can do. How do you figure out what its psychology is, what its level is, what does it, and so, and so we literally lay out a set of protocols, starting with the simplest things and then moving up to more complex things where you can make no assumptions about what this thing can do, right? Just from, you, you have to start and you'll, you'll find out. So, so when you're going to, so, so here's a simple, I mean, here's one way to communicate with something. If you can train it, that's a way of communicating. So if you can provide, if you can figure out what the currency of, of reward of, of positive and negative reinforcement is, right? And you can get it to do something it wasn't doing before based on experiences you've given it, you have taught it one thing. You have communicated one thing, that that such and such an action is good, so, so some other action is, is not good. That's that's like a basic atom of, of a, pr a primitive atom of communication. What about in some sense, if it gets you to do something you haven't done before, mm. Is it answering back? <laughs> yeah, m m most most certainly. And there's there's I've I've seen cartoons. I think maybe, maybe Gary Larson or somebody had a, had a cartoon of these of these rats in the maze, and the one rat uh, you know says to the other, "Hey, look at this! Every time every time I walk over here, he starts scribbling in that on the you know on yeah. this clipboard that he has. It's awesome." If we step outside ourselves and really measure how much, like if I if I actually measure how much I've changed because of my interaction with certain cellular automata. I mean, you really have to take that yeah. into consideration about like, well, these things are changing you too. Yes, I know you know how it works and so on, but you're being changed by the thing. Yeah. Absolutely, I think I think I read. Um, I don't know any details, but I, I think I read something about um, how, how wheat and other things have domesticated humans in terms of, right, but, but yeah. by their properties change the way that, that the human behavior and societal structures. So in that sense, cats are running the world. Cause they, yeah. they took over the, so first of all, so first they, while not giving a shit about humans, clearly with every, with, the, with every ounce of their being, they've somehow got just millions and millions of humans to, 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 to take them home and feed them. And then not only the physical space did they take over, they took over the digital space. They mm -hmm. dominate the internet in terms of cuteness, in terms of memeability. And so they're they're like, they got themselves literally inside the memes that become viral and spread on the internet. And they're the ones that are probably controlling humans. That's my theory. Another, that's a follow-up paper after the frog kissing. <laughs>